Welcome to iHeart Geek. And welcome to another episode of iHeart Geek. Okay, so to start before we uh, go nuts on this, now we are all over the country today. And so if there's a, some breakups or whatever, bear with us. We'll try to edit out as much as we can on that. Yay. Okay, we are talking about the the movie Black That's Widow. That's his way of saying some of us have sketchy Wi-Fi. <laughs> as she breaks up, you so you know who it was. <laughs> right. <laughs> we, we are talking about the movie Black Widow. Mm-hmm. Um, that it was, yeah. I, we all watched it last night because it just came out yesterday. And we have things to say. And yeah, we're going to try to release this episode a little bit early so that y'all can get it. Spoilers! <laughs> Watch the movie first. Okay. I'm Dub. <laughs> I'm here with Courtney, I'm here with Christina, and I'm here with Blyze. How y'all doing today? Good, excited. I'm excited. Doing good, man. The MCU is back, baby. Yeah. So here, here's my question. Before we get into the movie itself, let's talk a little bit about Black Widow, the character and kind of what we were expecting and how we think she's been portrayed as of now before the movie came out. So let let, let me hear... What were you guys expecting to see with this Black Widow? And the, keep in mind, this pretend you didn't watch the movie yet. What were you expecting to see? Let's start with you, Courtney. Um, first off, I was deathly afraid that it was going to be terrible. Um, mm-hmm. I, I was afraid it was gonna. I was afraid it was gonna be a victim of all of the hype because you know we kept. It's going to release it. No, we're going to push it. We're going to release it. No, we're going to push it. So I was afraid it was going to be a victim. I will say, personally, I feel it was completely worth the wait. Um, yeah. And I think I think it's a good... I think it was a very good final hurrah for um, Scarlett Johansson as Natasha. Because I know Maybe. this is the last time she's going to play Natasha. Maybe. I... Yeah, I mean, you never know with Marvel, really. You never really know with Marvel. Yeah. Um, Variants. I didn't really. Yeah, right. I did not. I didn't really have any kind of expectation going in, other than it was God, please don't let this suck. That's fair. Um, because you know, I didn't know where they were gonna plant this movie in in her timeline, mm-hmm. in her history. Um, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit later. They kind of retconned a little stuff from the, um, agent Carter TV show when they did some of this stuff. Fair enough. So huh. I'm excited. Christina, what about you? Uh, I was concerned that they weren't going to do her justice. She is one of my favorite characters. And so I, I definitely was worried and I, I felt like kind of a little bit like Courtney was either going to be absolutely phenomenal or I was going to walk away in angry tears. Uh, like Courtney also, I freaking loved it. Um, I watched it twice, so I went to bed very late last night. Um, it, I, I loved it. It was every, every it was everything that I portray her character to be. Very good. Blyz, what about you, bud? What were you expecting? Um, so I was expecting, um, I think I was expecting more origin, like visual origin than what mm-hmm. we got. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it is like stories being told and little flashbacks and things like that. I thought we were going to dive a little bit more into her like training in the red room as a kid. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I think everything else was kind of on par of what I was expecting. E- my thought of it now is even when the MCU releases a bad movie, it's still a good movie. So I was still... Because you drank the Kool-Aid. Mm-hmm. Mm, because it's true. <laughs> Me too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway. Raspberry. So, um, so I, I was expecting it to be good. The only gripe that I think I, I would have with this movie is that I wish it would have been released in the order of where it fits in the timeline. Yeah. I think if it would have been. That's actually one thing I was going to bring up. Yeah, if but it we'll would have been that part, slated yeah. right where it should have been, it would have been a lot more. It would have held a lot more weight than what it yeah. does now. Yeah. So with with me personally, when going in, I thought we were going to see um, even 
you'd get a little bit of Scarlett Johansson, but I thought we were going to get a young uh, Black Widow. I thought we were going to see training because I want to see how it ended up that she went from the Red Room. You want to see more Red Room? I I do. I wanted I wanted to see the training. I wanted to see the drama. You know the horrible stuff that they went through because I mean yes they touch on it, but. I think that that was kind of an injustice to the character. I think this could have very easily been split into two movies if they would have done that. And um, I could have been a lot. I would. I would have been a lot happier personally. And you could have introduced a new person uh, with as the as a Black Widow. And that that's that's that uh, that's what I wanted. I and think okay. I think Dub has been a little bit spoiled by his Disney Plus shows, and he would yeah. have liked a Disney Plus, a black, which is fair. That's absolutely I, I think true. I 100% agree which, that they could have made this into a Disney Plus show, and they could have started it out with them growing up and them going through the Red Room tests and all that stuff. And, and half of the season could have been them growing up, yeah. and then the rest could have been this movie. Yeah. I'm, honestly, I think that would have been a smarter move. I'm... As much as I love the Marvel movies, the Disney Plus series have ruined me to the point that I want the Disney Plus series more than I want the movies. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the, it's the same reason every time we're like, oh, I want a book adaptation. We're not like, oh, I want a book adaptation of a movie. I want a TV series adaptation. Yeah, because yeah, you want everything. You want everything that you yeah. are thinking of and dreaming I, in in that adaptation, but you can't do that in film. It's just it's hard to cut that down to two I, and a half hours. Yeah. I wonder if they didn't do more of the Red Room stuff because um, it's dark. <laughs> I mean, they touch on it throughout the MCU. Yeah, it's dark, but they touch on it throughout the MCU already. I mean, it's never it's never in depth. It's always just a little bit here and there. But um, and most people don't do this, but they do. They do a lot of the Red Room stuff in the Agent Carter TV series. Yeah, they do. Um, so they show. Yeah, they show some because there's a widow in the Agent Carter TV series. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It, I don't know if she's considered the first widow or not, but I mean, that's what I said. They kind of ret- retconned it a little bit because in here, it's this Dubrovic, he started it. It was this, is that. Well, in the Agent Carter TV show, it goes back, the widow program goes all the way back to the 40s. And yeah. so, I, I mean, maybe that's why they didn't do it. I mean, also, I wonder if the reason we didn't get more Red Room and more of her past becoming the Widow is because of how long it took them to give us a Widow movie in the first yeah. place. Sure, yeah. So, and, so. And, and, and going in, I think this is, um, you know, if we want to talk quote-unquote psychology of Black Widow, I think this has been a problem with the with the MCU, they've stretched this out and they've given us just taste of her and taste and taste and taste and never given you the full thing. And it was, if it would have been released when it should have been released, I would be having a complete, I would be having a lot more of a positive feeling for this movie. Um, No, I didn't hate this movie. Don't, I don't want to hear everyone griping at me. I did like this movie, but I think that it came. We will hate on it. Oh, well, (laughs) I, I will say this. I do agree with you. Like, just thinking about, I think it would have been phenomenal had they made Black Widow the TV series. Mm-hmm. And that's all of her childhood, and then released the movie, the movie. based sure. on that. Like I, that I actually have chills thinking about that. So, uh-huh. Disney, no, what were you thinking? But no matter what, it came too late. It should have shown up before. Uh, it should come right after yeah. Civil War. Yeah, after Civil War, before Infinity War, for sure. Period. Uh, I will yeah. think that's. A, I will that's say. An issue. I will. And I know we'll talk about this um, as we go on, but I will say I liked the way they answered the questions that people have been asking through the MCU. Yes. Yeah. So there's yeah. little, there's like little drops that they yeah. give about her past, and this movie answers those. Yeah. And, I mean, my biggest yeah. gripe goes kind of along with what you were saying because it comes too late. Um, I know that when we were watching, there were four of us in the room when we were watching last night, and one of us is not a she watches the MCU, MCU movies, but she doesn't, you know, she's not gotcha, yeah. super nerdy pants like we are. Yeah. So one, the gripe <laughs> that I had that goes along with the line, along the lines of it came too late is we actually had to stop it. Um, maybe like 15, 20 minutes in and explain to her where we were mm-hmm. in the timeline. Yeah. And so 
that's where yeah. that was with that. And so that was my, it's the same thing as it came too late. But I mean, it, on the other hand of that, that was also part of my biggest fear is that, that it was coming so late. My fear was like, well, by the time we actually watch it, I'm just not going to care. Yeah. And I'm happy to say that's not what happened at the, when I was watching it. But yeah. now, with, you know, with- it, I do agree that we should have gotten it earlier yeah. on in the MCU world. But with me, that was a problem. I kind of, you know, I don't want to say I didn't care, but it was no stakes because you know what happens next. You know, and yes, we. That was my other gripe. We're 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 nerds. We know we she's know, not going to die. We know how many contracts these guys have. We know everything else. Blah blah. But you can suspend disbelief a little bit. But when you've seen what happens afterwards, it's hard to take yourself out of that moment. I'm saying this could have been an A A plus easy for me, but because this. You just you don't get as invested. I think the I think the movie itself is definitely an A plus for me, but I do agree that the release is a C. But the other side of it is um I can't wait. We're already planning to get friends together and do like a Marvel marathon and put her where she belongs in that order. Yeah. But I also think that they she belongs. (laughs) I also think they they fixed it at the end a little bit, like they, there's some justification there. So. Yeah. Yeah. And now, now we, we all watched this yesterday and then we're recording this today. Uh, what I'm looking forward to actually is when we do our Patreon, when we've had time to sit on it a little bit and then we can talk about it because I, th- I'm feeling a lot of these emotions that a lot of us have on both sides of it are going to be a lot different after we get a little time and we can watch it a few times so I'm I'm actually really looking forward to that. Not that you shouldn't enjoy this show because this is more reactionary. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. This so, is the squeals. So let me let me ask you guys yeah. this question before we go yep. into the movie itself. Why Black Widow? What what has made her such a interesting character? Um, let's start with you, Blyz. Now this um, is comics and in universe. Sure. I think that this is for one, she for for movie universe, she was probably one of the first expanded universe characters to show up in the MCU. Like when when she showed up in Iron Man 2 and they and they name dropped her as Natasha Romanoff, everyone is like, whoa, like this they're putting characters in these movies because before you had Iron Man and you had Rhodey and but he was expected to be in that movie and it's then you in had that comic yeah yeah but you this was the first time you had a yeah. character from another comic show up in another character's movie so i think for a lot of people she's part of the real deep foundation of what Marvel did with their movies. Um, and as mm-hmm. far as comic books have gone since her appearance, her first appearance, she's been a huge part of the, the Marvel comics and she's gone through a lot of changes as a character into the black widow that we now know today. Um, so she's someone who generations of people can, can call their favorite character. Yeah. Christina, what mm-hmm. about you? I love her story arc. Um, I love that she has natural resources that she pulls on. I love that she doesn't have powers and yet she's still completely a, you know, I mean, she's, she's phenomenal. Uh, But I think mostly of a lot of people, I think that her story of redemption is um, heart wrenchingly beautiful. Fair enough. Courtney. She's just one of those great strong female characters that i mean you know the 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 male comic book reader because she has that great story arc and she you know she works well with the other characters i think what draw what drew little girls like me is it's it's another character you could kind of look up to in her strength and her power and i think they've really kept that in the mcu so, and I mean, it's like Bly says too, and Christina said, she has no powers, but there she is keeping up with the big boys, Yeah, Cap and Hulk and Thor. She's, she's, she's up there in that upper echelon with them. And there's never any question that she shouldn't be there. Yeah. Even though she has no powers, you know? And it's so, and there's also something intriguing about a character that's, that's, 
a master assassin and she's trained and, you know, she has that mysterious upbringing and, yeah. you know, it's, she has, she has all those great elements that they combine into one that I think that's really kind of helped the character endure. And I think also Scarlett Johansson in terms of the MCU has just yeah. done a really great job of bringing to life her in a physical way yeah. and yeah. you can tell that you can tell that for Scarlett Johansson it's not just a part she's playing you can tell she's actually put in the time to research the character and she really knows yeah. Yeah. who yes. Natasha is and I, she, I really appreciate that now at Blythe, this point she she loves the character and she is mm-hmm. that's her character that yeah. she's had for over a decade now so yeah, yeah. Blythe, both our heads were about to explode twice when both of the ladies <laughs> said something. I'll let you answer that one. Go ahead. So, and this is, I, I don't know, because this was a question that was brought up last last night while I was watching it. So you both mentioned that she has no powers, but in the opening credits, when they showed all the little girls being experimented on everything, there's a scene where they show one of them on a table and then they show uh, like a a beaker full of a blue liquid. And then they show them pulling the drape back on that girl. That was, are they experimenting on them with the super soldier serum? Or are they trying to replicate the super soldier serum? Cause that has been something that she's had in the comic books previously. Sure they are. So I wonder if at at some level she is. I was saying no powers. Cause in general, the comics she's never had any but yeah no i absolutely agree with you i know she i know she take doesn't she take the super social serum at some point in time in her comic book yeah lifestyle some, yeah, as she's well. enhanced yeah but yeah. yeah yeah i could totally get behind that she's enhanced in this movie especially because she does a lot of things i know there's at one point in time one of the guys who's a comic book guy like we are turned and looked at me and she, but she's not she's not like cap how is she doing that well yeah. she obviously has to be enhanced in order for her to do it so yeah i could totally get i miss i i think i missed that scene so i i don't remember that yeah yeah it's like the scene, opening credits I could get it's behind real quick. The, the thought that yeah i must have but yeah i can get behind that 100 percent that she's enhanced I, absolutely I've, as long as I've been reading anything with black widow, I've always thought, um, and it's it's always been implied. She had like a weaker version of the, of the super, of the captain America formula. And that's why she was able to do what Mm -hmm. she can do. Um, and that's, well, and it would make sense in the MCU because that's, that's why she would have been able to almost take down Bucky in, um, winter soldier. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter how good a great, fighter you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's that great fight scene, and and they they're pretty well equally matched in yes. that fight scene. Now, my my so, other, yeah, my other thing that I really love about this character is she's a black shirt. What I mean by that, she goes with everything. Because why has she been <laughs> in all these other movies? Because she fits everywhere, and that's why. Yes, she's yeah. needed her own movie. But she hasn't, and she's gotten as much notoriety as anybody else without her own movie because she goes with everything. Yeah, huh. yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, she's so part that's, of that's a thing. She she's goes part with of everything. What, <laughs> <laughs> she's part of what taught the MCU that they didn't need to do solely solo movies. You could get away with doing a movie and slating another character in that movie with just an equal of a part in it. And it still mm-hmm. works yeah. for that reason yeah. that she works so well with every character. Okay. So right, a good, oh, a good right. example is winter soldier because yes, that's caps movie and it's, it's a cap and Bucky situation movie, but it would not go anywhere if Natasha wasn't right yeah, there absolutely. with cap the whole time. And of yeah. course, of course, Sam, but <laughs> yeah, that helps. Okay. So let's uh-huh. move on to the movie itself. Um, you know what I want to talk about first? We talked about Black Widow herself, but I want to talk about some of the the other characters. And I, I've fallen in love with with the Red Guardian. Um, he was so good. <laughs> he was so he was. This guy is a piece of excrement, but I love him like I love Deadpool right now. I want to see more. He's like he's the DC version of KG KG Beast. I just 
there's nothing that great about them, but I love them and I want to watch everything that they could possibly yeah. do with them. Just such a fun character. And this is, I want to see more of him. I want to, I don't, but again, because there's so much time in between Civil War and now, how, do, and this character has to be so much older now, how can you do it? That, 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 but that's an issue with me as far as the timing goes. Um, so who are you, some of your guys' favorite characters? Let's start with Blythe on that one. Uh, I think, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> the whole supporting cast of the Widow family, I fell in love with each and every one of them, yeah. uh, especially oh, yeah. uh, Yelena. I did not, th- going into this movie, I did not think I was going to like her as a character. Um, I didn't think that I was going to be down for them expanding on her, which um, I know we we mentioned it a little bit before, but and we weren't sure about how the release of this movie and we knew kind of what was going on with Black Widow, so there were no stakes. But this is as much her movie as it is Black Widow's movie, and we'll get into it when we talk about the post-credits, but mm-hmm. it sets the stage yeah. for what she has upcoming up. And I want to see more of her character. She played that little sister part fantastically throughout the entire movie. Um, and like I said, I want to see more of her in the MCU and she, I didn't realize this, but she was Paige from fighting with my family and I love oh. that too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, the small, small issues I had with her. I liked her as a character. I felt like her accent kind of went in and out a little bit, but you know what? I like star Wars too. I mean, you, you know can't what? Too I, much <laughs> I felt that about all of them though. And I, yeah, yeah they I, definitely yeah. did. And I wonder if that was intentional because they're in and out of undercover so much. Yeah, that's how it, I took it. It shouldn't have been with her because she got she came out of the states when she was what six. Yeah, but she but she's, she's, a, she's widow, a widow. So she's, she's constantly everywhere. in and she's out. She's a of, widow, so okay. yeah, she constantly has and to be speak, wherever they need her. They speak hundreds of languages. Yeah. So even if it wasn't intentional, I could write that off as being intentional. Yeah. I say, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that's something that bothered me, but it's not so much like a Brie Larson bothers me. It's like, eh, okay, that's an issue. Um, because hey, everybody don't, in this don't make everybody you, don't in this make episode you on can Saturday. act. Hey, everybody the, can act. It's you great. know Red you know Red Guardian's a scroll, right? Shut uh, up. Got him. Uh, yes. <laughs> may, ba- may baby Yoda cast a curse on your house. Okay. <laughs> uh, so what about you, Christina? What were some of your, what was your favorite or some of your favorites? So because, because I've been reading him for a while, I was actually, I squealed when Ursa Major showed up. And uh, yes. I thought yeah. it was hilarious because then when Red Guardian's like, little bear, I was like, yes. Um, yes. I thought it was great. And his little wrist is hanging. I mean, so when I see little things like that, I'm like, ooh, are we going to get more? And and so I'm just curious as to, because he's another, uh, and it is uh, the Winter Guard. So maybe we'll get another. Sure. Yeah. How crazy Thank you. Would I couldn't it be? remember what the name of the society was. To make a spinoff called Winter Garden, and it's like Ursa Major and yep. Red Guardian, Guardian and Crimson, and Crimson Dynamo. Dynamo. That sounds Black like a money, yes, yeah. a, money, a money grab. Yes, that's a money. That's what we call a money grab. That I would buy as a series, not as a movie. Well, oh, no, they no could 100%. they could do it because I mean they've talked about Le- Leviathan throughout, which is the Russian arm of Hydra. Hydra. They've yeah. talked about Leviathan for at least i mean val valentina countess valentina she worked for levi she worked for leviathan they talked about Vi- leviathan in the agent yeah. carter tv show i mean it's been name dropped a bunch of times so it can happen well, even the fact that natasha was watching moonraker like yes. i mean that's the right? whole russian like so I, they could definitely be setting something up <laughs> what about yeah. you courtney uh, yeah um, I agree with Blythe. I mean, I, I did, Christina, and I did love when they brought Ursa Major, Ursa Major in, but I agree with Blythe. The whole Widow family, um, Red Guardian, Milena, Yelena, I, they were just, they all were perfectly cast first things. Um, and they, but they were just, they were so good as foils for each other. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I don't want to, jump too far ahead but you know when we get Milena and we you know see her later on and 
she's got the album and and whatnot. It's like they did a really good job of fleshing these characters out in a short period of time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I hope we do get to see more Malena and Red Guardian. Now I'm gonna put. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm. I got a question from a fellow geek this morning. Um, I'm gonna just say Andrew Wright because he's on the page all the time and he runs Ava's Avengers, um, the charity. So he he messaged me this morning and ha- he had a question about Red Guardian. So I'm gonna ask you guys what you think. Now we know that when we meet Red Guardian, he is boasting about fighting Captain America. In about 83, 84. Well, we know mm-hmm. that Steve Rogers was still on ice at that time. So was he actually fighting Captain America? A variant of Captain America? Or was it, you know, like an Isaiah, somebody who had, who had, you know, one of the other caps throughout yeah. history? Was he fighting a, perhaps a time travel? Or was he just being bullshitted it out? later on when he's talking to Tasha, he's like, does he mention me? Did he mention me? So has he told a lie so many times that he believes it now? Or did he really fight Cap? So what do you guys think? I'm let, curious. Let me let me say mine first. I think he is a complete and total okay. yeser. I think he, the, the only way to tell if he's lying is his lips are moving. That's, that's his tell. <laughs> um, and I think that he is uh, pathological enough no. about it that he believes his lie. I think when he's asking, did, did he mention me? He wants to be famous so bad that he wants, he's hoping that maybe Captain's heard, maybe, maybe Captain America's heard of me and that that will justify my whole life. That's what I think it is. No, I don't think he fought him. I think he's just a pathological liar. And I don't think it's even on purpose. I think he's just convinced himself. <laughs> what about you, Christina? We'll finish that well, with one Definitely. I mean, he has that line where he says, you know, he ended up from prison because he disagreed with the party and he wanted it to be a real party. So definitely he wants to be that little famous boy. And um, I think that's how he was the big man on campus in prison was the stories he told. And, um, you know, if you're in there a long time, you're creating a whole history for yourself to survive. And, you know, I just... Oh my God. I love him so much. He's just incredibly charming, even though he lies. Like we all, I don't know about you mm-hmm. guys, but I, we all have that one person in our lives that they feed you a ton of BS, but they're so dang entertaining about it that you let them get away with it. Even though, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Lies. What about yep. you? So I think that's how it's supposed to come off. But I think that he did fight someone that was that took on the persona of Captain America. And because people know the history of Captain America at this point, and you saw this with the inmates, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're you're just talking up your butt or whatever. And then but I think because this connects, this makes a connection into Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And now from that show, we know that with um, Isaiah Bradley, there have been different super soldiers throughout history. I think he may have fought someone under the Captain America persona. I don't think he realizes that it's not the same person as who Steve Rogers was. But and now it's kind of driving him crazy that he's telling all these stories and no one believes him because they all just think he's he's bsing them so well, no, it may also no, right. set up stuff for the multiverse too because i mean yeah. we know yeah, in WandaVision, exactly i'm convinced that wanda wanda broke the broke the timeline in wandavision i mean i know that we we say some of it is for uh we know loki does a bunch of timeline breaking but i think it it, it kind of also sets it up for the multiverse because it very well could be a, another version of steve yeah. for all we know i like yeah. that i mean and it also sets up a possibility of an evans cameo coming back as steve yeah which let's be honest that's what we all want anyway okay <laughs> what? So, so now let's let's discuss real quick um we're not going to do these how we usually do them with the scene by scene by scene we'll save that for our patreon episode this we're just talking about the movie itself okay now let, let's start with me being the unpopular guy let's talk about what we didn't like about this movie and then we'll talk about what we did now with the with the didn't we've already covered the the timeline it it screwed up the movie badly a lot um we talked about the little accent thing which was 
for some people, a bigger issue than others. Um, so what else is negatives on this movie? I think there was a bit too much of the talky 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 at points. Um, just me. What about y'all? What, what's, some, what's some of the negatives you have on this? So I'll jump in. Um, I'll jump in first. Um, I think for non-serious Marvel geeks like we, you know, we are, um, there's a little bit of a hand-holding that has to happen for the audience to explain where it is in the timeline and how it makes sense and, and that and that is a thing. Um, one of the other things, I don't say that I, I, I'm not sure that I hated it. Um, I don't know if, really it's, if it's a negative or not, but I feel like, and big old spoilers for people who haven't watched this, so go away. Um, I feel like <laughs> Taskmaster wasn't addressed enough. No. And I mean, I know there's a gender swap because she's Taskmaster is a is a guy in the comic books, um, and he's you know he's a merc and he's just willing to do anything for for money, but he won't work for the Russians. That's one of the things that he does in the, the comics. He won't work for the Russians. So mm-hmm. I thought it was interesting that they did this here, but I think it's also you know like Taskmaster shows up in that in that first scene with Natasha and. You know, it's like one of the questions we had from the, the woman who was watching who's not a huge, you know, she's not into the, the lore of it. Goes, who is that? Well, we can't really explain Taskmaster is this because we were waiting for it to be explained. And it never, they never really explained yeah. who Taskmaster was. And so I think that's, like I said, it's not really a negative, but it is something that I felt they kind of dropped the ball on. I can agree with that. Christina, you got anything? Um, oh, funny enough, Courtney, Courtney swiped mine. That was my biggest issue is that I, even at, even at the end, like when he, he delivers, I was still waiting for like a line that says, you know, who I am, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, no, mm-hmm. that was, uh, that was my biggest thing. Cause I actually, cause I'm definitely the bigger nerd in our family. So I had to explain to Sean where we were in the timeline. And then I had to explain to him who Taskmaster, Master, I can't talk. Yeah. Words. Words. <laughs> Flies yeah, I think I even oh, looked I... at the 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 one guy, the big the big comic winner. I said, wait a minute. It said, isn't Taskmaster a man? And he goes, Yeah. I said, Well, that's clearly a woman in that suit. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, he's like, Oh, I wonder if they I'm like, so they must have gender swapped it. So I was waiting for them to explain what they did. And I mean, we don't the the payoff is not really what it yeah, wasn't a good payoff. it needed to be yeah 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 i think it's one of those cases where unfortunately we want to see all these villains played out the way that they do in the comic books but not every villain can have their own like their huge spotlight minute or not every villain can be a thanos they can't go 10 movies long and, and have their own yeah. arc and all that stuff. So you need to, you need to slate them in where you can there. It's almost like a, um, a glorified Easter egg. So we put this villain kind of. in the, we put this villain in the movie that you all love. They have the same power set. I would have even, I can, I can kind of look past the origin of Taskmaster and what they did for her in this movie because it makes sense to the the story. The story of this yeah. movie, I would have liked to seen more Taskmaster. I would have liked to seen more yeah. of the the mimicry and you see her watching um, the fight between T'Challa and Hawkeye during Civil War, and you know that's her like studying the moves. I would have liked to have seen more Avengers mimicry to yeah. know that she has been watching all these fights from the beginning of the MCU or yeah. whenever whenever the event happened to to now and that she just has all of this in her her memory banks or whatever. Um so I think that uh, that probably is my only gripe with the movie. I can even kind of sidestep the timeline thing because because Marvel's your overlord. I because Mar- I mean, Marvel is the superior <laughs> superior movie universe, so it doesn't matter what they they release; it's going to be good. That that's always dangerous. I got hey, my big we old have cup no competition. of Marvel. We're have crap. <laughs> I got my big old cup of Marvel Kool Aid right here, and I'm gonna take me a sip. Yep, and I'll enjoy that. I said, and I love these movies, but I I'm not as ate up into the Marvel 
universe as much. And I and I love the characters. I mean, I've been talking about this stuff for the last three years, pretty much constantly with you guys. I love okay, it, yeah. but I'm I can't give yeah. it a pass on everything. And I feel like we're doing as fans, we're doing that a lot more. I don't. I, well, I think that holding I, holing the, uh, the 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 fire to people's feet on. Okay, well, you know, you blew it here. I think you still have to, and you can still love it, but you also can't let stuff go as much. If I that think, makes sense. I think they did a really, in spite of sidestepping the story, I think they did a really, really good job of humanizing. You know, especially the moment in his office um, yeah. where you're just like, oh, like, because we were like, who is it? Well, who is it? Who is it? And it was, I mean, I kind of had a low key idea, low key, sorry. Um, okay. But like when it really was, I was like, oh, my God, like I freaked. So, yeah. Well, and and to piggyback on that, Christina, the part where she's given the the gas and she's finally removed from the mind control and she's just kind of laying there crippled and, and she just looks at Natasha and she says, is he gone? Yeah. That was a very, very moving moment. I think for me too, in her humanization as well. And it'd be interesting to see where the MCU takes her in the future. Cause I, I feel we've not seen the end of Taskmaster for sure. I think they made a point of that whenever they were like, she comes with us. Uh-huh. Yeah. So. We'll, we'll see. I'm not, I, I say I'm not holding my breath on it, but I don't think it's a, it's outside the realm of possibility. So let Thank me ask, you. let me ask you this. And me and me and Tara had a little bit of debate about this last night when, and we, this may be jumping ahead a little bit, but when she is in, um, when she's seeing all the girls that he's showing up on the screen, are all of those already tapped widows or are they potential widows that he's just saying that I have this surplus of people that I can grab at any moment in time? They're because super cell. see, yeah. and that's, that's what I, I, that's what Tara thought. I didn't agree with. I think they're just potentials, but if they are sleeper cell, then that means I think they're widows. The, you are already tapped widows. You could potentially get a Disney Plus show that doesn't follow Natasha. It doesn't follow Yelena, but it follows that group of girls that they released Ooh. and Taskmaster. And it's them going and finding all these sleeper cell girls and releasing them. It could be a villain of it could be a widow villain of the week where could. every time they yeah. go to a different place, a different yeah. a different circumstance and they fight this widow yeah. and then they release them. And and with these sleeper cells, it's also they're like I think that the, I feel like they are like Natasha was in the beginning. They're not trained, but they're they're definitely they're marked for it. That's where I think that that one sits. See, so I, I don't know if they're necessarily. I trained. disagree, I doubt it. and I well, I disagree because he says you know when he's bragging, when he's boasting, he says that his widows start stop and start wars that they're you know they're very you know doing everything he wants that he basically controls the world so i think they're mm-hmm. tapped widows and that's why she says that they have to um that they have to replicate the antidote and get it out to set these these girls free i mean that was that, exactly that, what i was going to say christina yeah and that concept yeah, side because fine. yeah because she does um, I was going to say exactly the same, Christina. They say when she hands Yelena the disc and the vial of whatever it is, gas, potion, whatever we're calling it, um, she tells her, you've got to get Milena to replicate this. So that kind of tells us, I think, personally, Blaze, I'm not like saying you're wrong, but you are. Um, no. <laughs> But yeah, I think that that kind of gives the audience the idea that they're all tapped widows and they're all into this mind control thing. So they've got to go find them all. One, to stop them all from doing whatever they're supposed to be doing. But also, um, because if they were, if they were, I think if they were potential widows, they wouldn't need to use the mind control stuff because I think he implants them that mind control stuff when they go through the red room. So I will be real. That's just me. I could be wrong. 
I must have had a baby moment last night um, and missed that big exposition drop because I don't remember that, but that makes sense. So that that answers my question of who they are. If she has to replicate the the serum or whatever it is, to it's got to be that those girls are already tapped and they have the mind control in them. Whether they're they may be sleeper cells like Dubset, they may have no awareness of that they're even mind controlled, but he taps them when he needs them to do something. Yeah, they, they could have went through training it's if they don't possible. know it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. definitely possible. Which I think is actually, that's the more interesting. If they're going to do a show, with it, that's the more interesting. Because as they get um, awakened, that's when the story happens. Because it's what, what's going on here. They're just there. Uh, that's well, the, the more interesting story. The other side is they could be on task right now, but now there's nobody to... Get change orders. direction, alter direction. Yeah, so they're no just going to continue yeah, exactly. forward until yeah. something changes. Mm-hmm. And half of one thing. Yeah. Can I can I ask you guys something? One thing I noticed last night, and I just thought everybody's opinion is, Milena says to Natasha, "Did you know I was cycled through the red room four times? Four times. Yeah." Behind, before I came mm-hmm. your, became your mother. Can you just, I mean, like, why would you, re- re- I just wonder if her will was too strong or what, because we know Natasha goes through the red room, but I've not seen, I mean, if you guys know if this is a comic book thing, let me know. But I mean, four I times through the red room. Well, I oof. think if so, Milena seems to be the one that's developing all the mind control tech, like they what they show us at the pig and the oxygen thing. Like she's developing all that with her pigs. Yeah. So before her, that science may have kind of existed, but not really. I wonder if what they did was similar to what Bucky went through was they tapped them, they erased their mind and then froze them. And then when they needed her again, they tapped her. Like that's what she's talking about about having to go through the red room four times is instead of it just being something they could turn off and on, it was something they had to wipe completely every single time and then rehash them through the whole thing. Could be. I I can get behind that. I can get behind that. Yeah, and, and now it's just at this point, it's just speculation because it could be the, the, uh, both yeah. of those have merit. So I don't know because if 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 they erased her memory four times, how does she remember she's been through it? Um, that would be my only question. Sure, I think she's incredibly strong willed. Just based on the fact that she told Natasha to leave the book behind, but she took uh-huh. it. I think she's got this, you know, very 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 strong will. But she was born into it, so she never knew any different. So. Yeah. Um, I think they were just, I think they were probably using more like immersion yeah. techniques on her. And then if it, they would try to perfect it and move forward. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the impression I got. Now, now in the last few minutes we have left, I know we're going long because this is an interesting topic. Oh, so good. So good let's, let's talk. What are some of your favorite things about this movie? And I want to claim this one first. I think the action was up to the Marvel standard of uh, these Disney plus movies. We haven't had that. Maybe Falcon, the winter soldier had it, but I mean, most of these have not had those fantastically choreographed, just beautiful fight scenes. And this, they gave me a lot of it in this and I appreciate it because this was definitely made to be in the theaters. This, that, that, that's, that is honestly my, other than the, the post credit scene, that's, that's my high point of these, of this movie. Um, let's let's start with Christina. What is your favorite part of this movie? Honestly, uh, the little tiny bits, the humor when Yelena makes fun of her for her Avenger pose. That and, was funny. And Such then when a poser. She, and then when she does it herself and was like disgusting. <laughs> um, oh, that's disgusting. But, but yeah. also how they introduced um, how they introduced uh, Black Widow's jacket. I loved that. You know, it has pockets. Um, so I loved those little intimate moments. I love big action. You know, I do. But I really, on this one, I love those little intimate moments that were pieces of humor, like when Red Crimson started singing uh, Bye Bye, Miss American Pie, all those little tiny intimate details. I loved those. I yeah. really connected with those. Even so much um, when she's at the end, and she's walking her dog and she says her dog's name. Did anybody catch that? Mm-mm. Her dog's mm. name was Fanny. Oh, yeah. As in Fanny Longbottom. Gotcha. So that just tickled me. 
Nice. Blythe? Um, so, I mean, this, like you said, Dub, this was up to the Marvel standard as far as action goes. Um, and I loved, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, I loved Yelena as a character. Her, her little quips as what, like, a, the teenager that she never got to be was coming out the entire movie. Um, and I, mm-hmm. I loved all the, the dialogue and everything in between them. Um, I, I'm kind of going to take a step backwards to the, the things that we didn't like. Cause I wasn't sure if this was going to be a potential thing that people liked or didn't like. And I'd like to get Christina and Courtney's thoughts on it. So in age of Ultron, you get the line from her saying that, she's a monster because she can't reproduce. And that was something that, that hit a lot of people as not the best type of dialogue. But then this movie kind of takes that whole aspect and they kind of, they try to lighten it up a bit. It's not uh, with her mm-hmm. whole thing of like, they go inside you and then they rip it all out. And then red guardians like, okay, okay. I don't need all the visual stuff. Did that, did that make, were you guys ever bothered by that line in age of Ultron? And, and maybe did this kind of lighten that up for you a bit? I, I personally was never bothered by it. And the reason why is because, I mean, not to get too serious, but like I have a daughter that is struggling to have babies. Um, so it didn't bother me because I understand that for most women, there's like this biological need And so I get how she felt like that. I did like that they, I mean, they lightened it up, but it was very clinical in a very funny way, especially when she was like, I was about to start on the fallopian tubes. Um, You know, so yeah, I think that they were intentional with that decision. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think the, I think the age of Ultron line was intended to make people go, oh God, that's horrid. Yeah. Because I mean, forced sterilization is not a lovely topic. No. Anyways. Uh, yeah. So, um, but I did what I did enjoy is that both Natasha and Yelena almost have a well, this happened, it, it's part of who we are, so let's make a joke about it. But it was also what is fun is it's also designed to be kind of a dig at their dad. Because let's be honest, he's their dad. Yeah. Um, a dig at their dad yeah. to see if they can get a reaction out of him, which is what they did. So yeah, I I thought that scene was really humorous. Because when you do start using the clinical terms, sometimes 99% of the time people get a little uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of it was it was fun yeah. to watch. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was um my the only thing I kind of and then the one thing I really liked about this movie is the little things that were have been seeded throughout the MCU that we got. So Budapest, we had, um, they kind of took us where her and Hawkeye were doing from when he attacked her in her apartment all the way until when they tried to assassinate, um, I forget his name now the bad Russian man. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Something with a D. Yeah. Yeah. So they did, they did that. And then there was little, little tidbits that they've, that everyone's kind of like, this is the history I want out of black widow. And they, and they gave that to us in some sense. Very good. Courtney, let's hear, let's hear your favorites. Did we lose you? Um, I agree with you on the fight scenes. I thought the I thought the stunt choreography um, this time around. I just mm. really loved it. Um, but I also I think one of my favorite parts, and I think we talked about it already, it was the family dynamic between Red Gar, Alexi, Red Guardian, Milena, Yelena, and Natasha, especially at the table. Um, when they when they go to Yelena's house for the first, they see Milena's house, Milena for the first time in a long time, and they're all at the table, and Alexi and Milena are flirting, and Yelena's drinking because it's gross, and Natasha's like, "Don't do that, don't just ew," you know. So I mean, that was that really kind of, you know, like, don't talk about sex and your parents. So I mean, th- I really loved that part a lot. <laughs> Cause it was just, it, I think that really solidified how close. So like when you, it, it, th- that scene for me was, was great because when we get to the part where Milena says, I've, 
I've alerted the red room. They'll be here in minutes. Mm-hmm. When you find out of the, about the, the switch and everything, you're, you kind of, because you see the dynamic of the four of them together at that dinner seat, at that table scene where they're eating and, you know, she's trying, she's being the mom. She's trying to feed everybody. Um, it's just, I think that kind of, that kind of, you, you're, you don't really think she's a bad guy when she says I've alerted the red room. You're like, something's coming up. She's not going to, she's not going to be this person. She's not going to be the bad guy and turn everything around. Um, and plus I also, I really love the part where she's on the earpiece and she's like, Yelena, it's mama. This is what you need to do. And I mean, and I, I did love the flirting between Alexi and Milena cause it was just so awkward and weird and yeah. beautiful. Really adorable. Yes. <laughs> yeah. like, like, right. Like everything's, everything's blowing up everywhere. And they're like, what's up, baby? Haven't seen you in a while. I mean, I love it. <laughs> Okay, now let's talk about the last thing that we see on it, and this was the highlight of the movie to me. This, for this, this the the post credit scene, literally, that was a, a very visceral moment. I watched it with Marlon last night, and we both had our hands our our hands over our mouth, and we, oh! yeah, it was. <laughs> that it was, was me when Val showed up. Yeah, it was amazing. This post credit scene, I it's not necessarily that it even really said anything it did, but it was like, mm. I'm not that this was the highlight of the movie to me. I loved this post credit scene. It's just perfect. And I, I see where we're going with the it DC sets up Herbie in the, in the Hawkeye TV show. And I'm down for it. I, well, that's what it's going to have to you be. Next. So what were your guys' real quick thoughts on the, on the post credit scene? Uh, Courtney already went. Let's blah. Christina. Uh, from the moment she called the dog Fanny, I just knew where she was going at that point. Um, this whole scene justified the fact that it was out of the timeline for me. It, I, I, I'm so excited for, for, for Hawkeye because of it. And in my opinion, uh, when you see Val and Falcon and Winter Soldier, she, you, she kind of comes across as altruistic. Not anymore. She has a very intended agenda, and mm. I don't think it's good at all. Depends on depends on what side you're on, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what about you, bud? Um, so yeah, I think this this scene definitely justifies um where it sits in the timeline. It shows you that it even though this takes place before we are, we still know that the that she's not there anymore um and i also want to to point out that this was the first time that we were supposed to see val this was supposed to be your first introduction into the mcu if it wasn't for uh covid and the delay of black widow that's we right seen this it was before uh falcon and the winter soldier. winter soldier um and i um don't know if you guys are on the same page but i think we're going dark avengers with this Mm-hmm. That's what is it, it Dark like. Avengers or is it Thun- Thunderbolts? Uh, I could be either or. Well, I think we see a be. lot of Thunderbolt Ross in this. Yeah, I think it could be either yeah. or. I think you could go Dark Avengers or you could go Thunderbolts. Or the, I I want to say Dark Avengers I'm leaning towards more because Val seems to be a lot... She seems to be a lot more like maniacal than I think a Thunderbolt. Because the Thunderbolts are usually like a Mercs type thing. And I think a dark yeah. Avengers would be a villainous type thing, which I think that's where she, that's where she's sitting for me is that she's manipulating these people yeah. who are on the line of being good and evil. And she's pushing them towards her own side. She's a Nick Fury of sorts, but in the other direction. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, if they want to keep throwing her in for cameos, whenever I'm Julia good. Louis Dreyfus shows up, I'm like, yes, she so, should. I'm glad she's, I'm so glad she's in the MCU now. That's all I have yeah. to say about that. She's the Samuel L. Jackson of phase four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever phase we're on now. Okay. So, right. so here, here's the question I always ask at the end of these movie things. And we're going to change around a little bit. What did you grade it? And was it worth the 30 bucks or would you, or what price would have been worth it for you? I'll do mine last. So you guys can yell at me later. Uh, let's start with Christina. Absolutely an A plus. We'll yell at you now. Uh, 
I love everything about this movie. Um, I can very easily forgive that it's outside of the timeline because it's just that good. Um, the action, the dynamic, mm-hmm. the tender moments, the little Easter eggs that were dropped along the way. Easily. Fair enough. And you pay the 30, 30 bucks is fair for you. Well, I split it, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, but let me explain. I have an 86 inch TV, so it's almost like the theater anyway. <laughs> Blythe. Um, yeah. A plus for me, I'm glad that uh, the MCU is back and that we're going to get one of these movies every two months for like the next year. Um, uh, I actually forgot to ask you guys if anyone saw this in theaters um, and it seems like none, nobody went and None saw it in the theaters. Um, so $30 was well worth it for me. Um, because I would have went, I wish we would have been able to see this in theaters. I would have loved to seen this on the big screen in theaters. Um, it's not too late. And uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> certain circumstances are kind of holding us from, from going, but, um, yeah, I would have loved to seen it, and I would have spent well over thirty dollars if I would have went to see it in the theaters. I would have spent sixteen to twenty dollars a ticket plus whatever snacks and stuff we would have picked up at the the concession stand, and it, it so thirty bucks was was well worth it for us. Fair enough, Courtney. I'm going to give it an A plus too, and you know it's really hard to get an A plus out of me. Um, I think it was well worth the wait. Um, I think. I do think it is one of the better Marvel movies and that's, that's, that's also hard to get out of me as well. Cause you know, I, you know, I like the ones that other people don't like, but this one is right up there. I think for me with winter soldier and black Panther, which are two of my absolute favorites in the MCU. Um, I split it to like Christina. So I only paid 15, but it was absolutely worth that $15. And we didn't buy it on my Disney Plus. When I get home, I will probably pay the thirty dollars so that I have it, so I can watch it several more times because I really enjoyed it and I really thought it was worth the wait and worth the hype and worth the price. Okay, I wish I watched the same movie as you guys. I don't see it like that. Uh, for me, it was a B minus um, because of the reasons why I said, especially the timeline thing. As again, again, they would have released this a lot earlier. It's a different grade for me. Um, and having to pay for it, I just, I, yeah. If, you know, I, I think five bucks is, is, is a fair for watching a movie in your own home. And maybe I'm just cheap. I liked it. I thought I'm going to have to watch this movie again because I don't see what you guys are seeing. But I, I know I'm not the only one like this either because I've talked to several people that kind of feel the same way. I didn't hate it. But I don't see it being as even upper echelon of the Marvel movies. I thought it was good. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to have to watch it again. And hopefully I can see it through your guys' eyes. I just, I don't see it. Um, But, again, that's not saying it's a bad movie at all. Not whatsoever. Uh, And that is a show y'all can yell at me later. Um, Check out our our website, www.iheartgeekshow.com. Use Conway Paid Extra for it. Uh, go to our Patreon, uh, support us. You get lots of lots of extra content there. Go shopping, buy a t-shirt. Um, yeah, go to Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Smoke Signals. Twitter. Reddit, Twitter, everything. We're all there. Um, and until next time, I'm Dub. I'm here with Courtney. I'm here with Christine. I'm here with Blythe. Keep on geeking on, guys. You have been listening to the latest episode of the iHeart Geek Show. Make sure you visit our website at www.iheartgeekshow.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you check us out on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And keep on geeking on to all of you geek rock stars.